So lads and lassies, we're doing what's called foot activation here today with Dylan as my model. And he's also, he works here Wednesdays, go, so if you check him out. Dylan, you haven't sent me that bio yet. Yeah, he's a chartered physio and he fucking, he knows a bike inside out. And he's doing bike fits on Wednesdays. But here, look, we're today, we're, we're just looking at something called foot activation, which basically is a fancy word for changing the feeling of your how your foot feels inside in the shoe by using stuff like foot beds by using four foot wedges by using cleat wedges and by using heel wedges and dylan we've just finished his, finished his uh, left foot and he found out that he found and felt that two heel wedges were the best um gave him the best sort of overall smooth spread of contact under his foot that's a heel wedge there. So it'll be interesting to, interesting now to look at what works for his right foot, because that can be very different. Uh, I'll take you through the process, starting from now, basically. So Dylan, uh, do you feel a nice, even spread of contact under your arch and leading up to just before your first met? Uh, no. No, and we're talking about the right foot, yeah? Yeah. Cool. So. We know that we can make an improvement here. He already has a uh, category three uh, jibiumized insole in place there, but we need more and better contact. So let's go with uh, four foot wedges. This here is a four foot wedge by Form, right? That's the brand I'll be using. And set the, the thicker side to the inside. And here, insole back. Simple. Okay, so we can do it pretty quickly, but the process does take time. You can imagine one foot at a time, and we comparatively test. So we're going to do one four foot wedge if he thinks it's nicer. We could do two, and, we, and so on. Right, on you go, Dylan. So he's now feeling that right foot, feeling the contact. Yeah, way more contact. He likes it. Eat better spread of load from under yeah, the arch. Much better um, even pressure between the arch and now across the foot where the floor was a little bit on the arch and the big toe mostly and nothing else. Right, okay, so we actually have pressure mapping on Dylan with my bike shoes on today and it does show that he has a lot of load going through the kind of base of his first toe, his big toe. So anything that's gonna help that is good. And, he, and in, also it was interesting that the four foot wedge was not nice on his left foot. So that shows how one foot can be different to the other. So knowing that that's better, we're going to put another one in. And that's comparative testing model. Right, two four foot wedges. 1.5 degrees each. That's three degrees of uh, lift on the inside of his foot. Do you have a nice even spread of contact? Underneath the arch leading up to the start of your first met. No, there is way less pressure under my arch now. Less pressure. And then there's more like a squash feeling across the toe box. Right. Yeah. Cool. So knowing that we can get, we'll get less volume in the shoe when we start using four foot wedges. So uh, that's going to give him that kind of squashed feeling. So he likes one. So what we do is we take note of that and then we move to a cleat wedge. He's going to have a nice impact as well. Took one of the four foot wedges out because he liked one. So there's one left in there, and then we've put a cleat wedge in with the thicker side on the inside of the shoe. And that then we're going to look to see if we've made any improvements in his uh, sensory feedback. Okay, so Dylan is thinking out about it, thinking now, focusing on the right foot. Does he get a better? Uh, contact, uh, even spread of contact under the arch and up towards the first mat. No, I don't. I think there's more pressure on my arch now. There's a little more pressure on my arch and less pressure across the ball of my foot. Yeah. So with that, as the tester, I'm going to go and double the cleat wedge number to see if that's can we affirm, can we maybe we could know for sure 
that a cleat wedge wouldn't be a goer, yes? Yeah? So we always go higher and then we'll know. Let's do that. He's uh, locked in and he's got two cleat wedges and one four foot wedge. Yeah, uh, it actually just, just doesn't feel comfortable. Really. Okay. Just, uh, I think it's very, really good. Feel. My foot feels tilted. Yeah. Uh, towards me or towards you? Towards you, yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, we also look for answers from the clients because that's one that would uh, describe maybe excessive uh, cleat wedging because they'll feel like they're sliding away from the bike. Uh, okay, no, that's cool. So we're going to take out two of them. Would you agree, Dylan? Yeah. Take out two uh, cleat, cleat wedges so that there's none left. And then we'll actually go towards the heel. Uh, but we'll take out the four foot wedge and put in some heel wedging. And then we'll see if, if we can match them together and become and make a, an ultimate footbed. Right, so like I said, we've got no cleat wedge, no four foot wedge and one heel wedge. Yeah, and let's see what Dylan thinks. Yeah, it's okay. I actually don't know if I feel much of a difference, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. That can happen. Yeah, so neither, neither good nor bad, so we will double up. Two heel wedges. So there's much more contact now in the arch of the foot. Nice. And yeah, that's a big change. Feels good. I like that. All right. Uh, let's go with three. Three heel wedges. Okay, so now there's still that same contact in the arch. Yep. But there's a little more pressure into the forefoot. I don't know if that's good or bad. It just feels like lots of contact across the across the toes. Yeah. And the heads and the arches as well, so yeah, feels alright, you know. Feels alright, you know, yeah. I'd probably take that and go another one uh, to really confirm or to uh, show that two was the best. We've got four heel wedges in there, each of them are a degree. Yeah, my foot feels a bit squashed actually. Uh, the ball of the foot, yeah, it's kind of pressure. Yeah, high pressure? Uh, it's just a bit, it feels kind of crowded. Right, 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 yeah. But obviously, if, you th if we think about it, yeah, there's going to be more, potentially more load going down towards the ball of his foot with a higher heel. So, yeah, what are we thinking? Two or three. Okay. Let's go with two and a four foot wedge and we'll work from there. Uh -huh. So, uh, before Dylan tells us what's going on, we've got, yeah, two heel wedges and one four foot wedge and. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Uh, feels, there's nice contact. Don't feel squashed. Feel a good contact from like through the arch, across the ball of the foot. Yeah, no, it feels, it's happy. I feel the best. It seems a good one, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so interesting there. We, we've taken you through uh, that process, which is takes time. Uh, you can come in obviously just for that alone like maybe a couple of hours and we would go through left foot right foot and then we'll get optimum that way or you can add it on to a bike fit and call, call it the fully comprehensive bike fit really which is a four hour session because you can see why that would take time but yeah his right foot is gonna is different to his left and we would actually not quite finish now here we could look then at um synchronicity between his left and right in terms of like how they feel in terms of the pedal stroke around the bottom of the pedal stroke which is just another uh getting more sort of feedback from the rider like i have technology that i'll use saddle mapping camera foot pressure mapping but uh yeah we would just go a little bit more into like how like little tiny increments one one or two mil uh saddle rises or drops to feel it out that way but yeah check out the website to read more about it uh thanks for watching